So we are at um, the Yongsan Eye Park Mall. We actually came to see a movie in the movie theater. What did we see? The Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid, right. The live action Little Mermaid yes. movie. And I have never seen either of the Little Mermaid movies. We watched the animated one two nights ago. Mm -hmm. And I'd never seen it before. Mm -hmm. And I can recite the movie from yeah. like beginning to end because it came out when I was six years old. Yeah. So 1990, 1989. And I just, this was the movie of my, my life that defined the course of my life, I okay. think. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that. Well, I saw it, so I was in college mm -hmm. when this movie was out. Um, well, it was, I was, it was after the movie had already been out, mm -hmm. but while I was in college, I was friends with a lot of artists. Yeah. And this was the beginning of the, really one of the two great eras of Disney, I think. This yeah. is the second of the great era of Disney, in my opinion. Yeah. And this was the start of it. And after this, you got Beauty and the Beast, you got Aladdin, you got yeah. um, just these great Lion movies. King that follow yeah I think mm -hmm. Lion King may have been the last great one like there was a period I think you're right yeah um, and then it kind of fell apart again yeah. a little bit but my friends in college adored this movie they did yeah because yeah. Um, you know people think of Disney movies as like these fantasy movies mm -hmm. uh, for kids mm -hmm. but um, I came around to Disney through them mm -hmm. and we're like you know 20 years old um, and they were watching the movie for the art. Mm -hmm. And also, mm -hmm. I realize now, because of how hot Ariel is. Really? She's a total, like, fantasy woman. Mm. In what way? I mean, you do, I, I see it differently now that I am, like, an adult. Mm -hmm. And sort of like a, an advanced adult. Like, well, I'm not even a young adult. And I see it very differently now. Yeah. Well, first of all, in the, in the movie, there's a very... There's a there's a there's an implicit sexual undertone throughout the movie. I can see that, and it's something you get as a twenty year old that you may not pick up on as a six year old. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> and she's she's very flirtatious mm -hmm. and very attractive mm -hmm. and very beautiful and very out of reach. Mm -hmm. And she's a siren. She's a siren. Yeah, yeah. she's yes. a she's a fantasy woman. Yeah. So. I had just never seen it. I saw, you know, I saw Beauty and the Beast and I loved it. I saw Aladdin and I loved it. And, you know, we would talk about the art and we'd leave the movie theater and we'd talk about how amazing the art is. Um, we also used to watch Fantasia uh, yep. on VHS at our house that we had in college. Yeah, us too, yeah. But we would play Yes songs. Okay, I didn't do that. Rather but... than... <laughs> anyway, that, so what did you think seeing the, the animated film again? Uh, well, you know, to I cover that first. Yeah, before we I rewatched it and rewatched it to death. Like as you know, I could recite it, especially the first part because I didn't really care for the, the latter part of the movie where it mm -hmm. gets kind of scary and violent. Well, you know, for a six-year-old. So that's the other thing about Disney. I don't mean to interrupt you, but it was very dark. Like it would go really dark sometimes. Anyway, that's the other I, thing we know, liked. My mother, who was just gung-ho on raising me to become like a level-headed you know strong independent woman immediately when, when we left the theater back in 1989 mm. she looked at me and she said you know that's not what really happened in the uh, original story and I um, she read me the Hans Christian Andersen version mm -hmm. and you know the little mermaid dies she has she the prince betrays her you know and uh, she's basically she suffers the consequences of her actions her, her choices right mm -hmm. her naive choices and it's a beautiful tale because it is sad and utterly heartbreaking mm. and it didn't make sense from the beginning the union with this mermaid and the sailor this mm -hmm. prince didn't make any sense from the beginning and so there had to be sort of like a a tragic um, end. A tragic end mm -hmm. to the story. Mm -hmm. um, but Disney kind of forcefully did a happy ending. And but that's what Disney does with yes, the yes. stories. So I, even as a child, it didn't, like, the latter part of this story was not of great interest to me. Like, I don't know, it just felt like 
no, okay, that's convenient. Mm -hmm. I didn't really like understand why I felt that way, but you know, throughout the years when I rewatched it, it just became more and more, um, I don't know, like it, it just made less and less sense to me. Mm -hmm. And like now as an adult, I'm like, that shit is just ridiculous. But you enjoyed it when we watched it. I enjoy night. it so much. I mean, there's so much beauty and longing in that in the songs mm. they're yeah, the songs masterpieces are good. they are master and jody benson the original voice actor mm. who did ariel's voice was a huge influence to me and my career and just who i became you know in general like this movie just basically defined the course of my life mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, the voice acting was sensational. The voice acting was just not only her, not only her, but yeah, exactly. There but was the, um, the 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 witch of the sea. What's her name? I don't Ursula? know. Yeah, but I don't know what the actress's name was. But she um, great voice. It was amazing. It was an iconic performance yeah. that, um, and I've seen people recreate it at um, this bar called Marie's Crisis in the West Village in New York, mm -hmm. where they just we stand around and we just like sing you know show tunes and disney songs and there's a piano player mm -hmm. and this bar is like it attracts the biggest musical theater nerds and like i've seen people just go to town with that song for mm -hmm. unfortunate souls um so yeah it has touched so many people mm -hmm. so many languages all over the world like all aspects of life you know um and yeah that it it will always be like they're a sacred sort of, you know, mm -hmm. always have a place in my heart. It will always be sacred. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how I feel about the original animation. Okay. How did you feel about it as a first timer? I enjoyed -timer? it. Yeah, yeah. first timer. I, um, I mean, I, I was reminded again of, you know, the Disney movies that I loved during that period, the period that followed that in the early 90s. Um, I just really enjoyed those films and they you know they always had something for me and they're so hugely entertaining you know again they're not just kids movies they they become or they they also appeal to you know I mean they're supposed to appeal to the adults also who go to the film but they also appeal to us dorky 20 year olds 21 20 yeah. 23 year olds mm -hmm. who would go to these and just enjoy the breakthrough techniques of animation so mm -hmm watching this movie it's like it's almost like this was the first one of that of that rebirth of, of disney and i really enjoyed it i liked i like the songs i like the animation i like the darkness of it there's a lot of freudian kind of yeah, undertones to that. it because of the father who um you know invades her her private space and destroys all of the things mm -hmm. that she holds precious and you know, it's sort of that's part of the thing that draws her to, you know, defy her father and go and find her own way. Um, but, yeah, I just really liked it. Yeah, and um, there is some, that, there's a lot of, yeah, the, the, the sexual undertones for sure. And then there's like some, apparently some symbolism behind, you know, why she has red hair. I forgot mm. what the symbolism was, but this movie has been analyzed to death. Mm. throughout the last three decades. Mm. You pointed out an interesting thing. Yeah. You said um, that someone noticed that in Disney movies, there's no mother. Yeah, the Disney princesses yeah. don't so have mothers. So it's all like daughter-father relationships yeah. and then yeah. her having to defy her father. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. There's like no mother figure around mm -hmm. or no really present mother figure around mm -hmm. in these Disney movies. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting. Yeah.